Be on Jamo at the AGM of the New Zealand Rugby Foundation. I've bumped into an old mate of mine from uni days, John Leslie. John, good to see you. Um, now, it's, it was with a hand on heart that I tell you that Guardians is closing down, mate, um, during your Halcyon days. I've seen you in a few states at Guardians. Any, anything you can remember of the time there? Dark. <laughs> That's all I say, mate. <laughs> it was dark, period. I was, I was, I was, I was, yeah, dark and a lot better. A few glory moments, but uh, yeah, that no, was a good time. I think the first time I got dragged in there was our, we got buddied up with our varsity A mates, and we all, we all got to get a mate, and I got teamed up with Aaron Pino. Yeah, Jesus. And uh, Aaron, and uh, my other new boy in the team, Jason Wright, got teamed up with Jamie Saker, but uh, we had to swap partners after about half an hour because big car. <laughs> the bear doesn't get in the straight too quickly. So Jed Wright was a bit of them. They were about the same pace and I had to uh, team up with Jamie Saker who was um, good at sitting nude in the uh, gardens and plucking ducks. Yep. So uh, yeah, he was I was his uh, boy for that year. Of course when you when you guys weren't beating off the ladies with sticks at gardens, you, you played a bit of footy for Otago. Um, you know the the good teams where we had Goldie and JT and Self, Macca, Tony Brown, Foster, Basher, Pene, Jack, and all this goes on. They're, they're bloody great years, you know. In, in that era, who are the, uh, the characters that stood out the most for you? Oh, lots of characters. Um, Mark Ellis, definitely. I used to flat with Mark when um, we, we both made the Otago teams as youngsters and um, in a couple of weeks of each other, actually. And, and I try to get a ride with him, you know, I'll get a ride to you. He was calm and always buying cars off bogans and all kinds of, all kinds of carry on. So he'd always have the car and I wouldn't have one, so I'd say, and he, he, he got in the All Blacks rather quickly as well, so he ended up getting some, not like the glory cars they got now, some <laughs> but he had a car, and so I'd say, he had, he had all kinds of cars going on, and, um, but I'd say, I'd get a ride, ride to train with you, but it'd be like, we'd start training at four o'clock, and he'd leave at like 10 to four, and that was too much for me, I'm, I'm, I was a bit of a good boy, you know, so I used to get Josh Cromwell to come and pick me up, just after three and make our way there and get changed and Alice every every single training this is this is without a lie come tearing in at about one minute to four because being late was a drop in the fence yeah. and everyone knew that. And Laurie would be calling the shots. Oh Gordy Hunter was oh, there. Gordy. Yeah and, and, and with Laurie and with Laurie is just Mark was just he'd turn up to training and he'd be wearing he'd come sprinting in the changing room the need of winter, t shirt shorts, bare feet, scrounge around for whatever was left. Whack his kid on with 30 seconds to spare, sit down. If he had, to if he had time to tape his ears up, I don't know why, he used to tape his ears up as well, and he'd sit there all serious and the boys were like. So I, got, I, I left him behind because it was just too nerve wracking for me to think I could be late for practice. A bit of a maniac, that's for sure. You keep in touch with much of the old crew? Yes, yeah, we, uh, we keep in contact. Email's easy these days, so we um, throw a few emails around, and, um, and, and we've got an Otago Barbarians team going to the Golden Oldies this year. Sydney. Yep, so if anyone wants to come and join us, the invitation is open. It's not just for uh, ex rugby players because we're not really we're not worried about the uh, rugby, we just want to drink lots of beer and talk lots of rubbish. So if anyone's keen, even if you just came and watched, you, you're more than welcome to join the team. Drop me a, drop me an email. And um, yeah, we were a, we're a good bunch. Uh, we got on really well when we played and we, we still keep in contact and, it's, uh, and we, we like to find opportunities. 40ths are rolling around at the moment, so yeah. we've seen each other for 40ths and, you know, anything else that's happening. <laughs> so, um, yeah, excuse to catch up yeah exactly, we, we, we do enjoy each other's company um, and, and we love catching up together. I remember as a um, pimply-faced teenager standing on Carisbrook with about, what it seems like about 50 beers under my belt, watching you guys play the box. Mm. Um, but we won, we bet the Masters. Yes. Uh, you were playing that game, of course, maybe even captaining it. Uh, David Ladder was captain. Hey Mel, I'm just doing an interview, I'll call you back. Right. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, Crazy would have been captain out then. Crazy was captain and um, I was lucky enough to score a try. But, um, yeah, it was pouring down and... Um, Stepped like six people. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> just just hit, a, hit, a, hit a line inside the snake handler. The snake handler got everyone chasing him and I thought, oh, well, I've got to run a line inside him and uh, it just opened up for me. Oh, no, the, the, the great, great memories. Good memories. And, and then you, uh, then you of course, uh, played a few games for the Highlanders and that and then... Uh, Fell in love with the Scots and went over there and played directly over there. Quite an exciting debut, from what I recall. Yeah, yeah. It didn't well, take long to find out how easy international footy was. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I was just lucky enough to be going through a bit of a bit of a purple patch at that moment. The ball was bouncing my way and I was injury free. All those good things that just happen sometimes. And 
turned up in Scotland and not long after that made the, made the national side and um, really enjoyed that. I was, I was lucky enough to play with a, with a really, really good group of uh, Scots boys because the depth isn't that great over there, but it just so happened that we had a lot of guys hitting their, hitting their, hitting their peak at about that time. We went on to win the um, win the Five Nations. Uh, we're at 120 outsiders to start with, and we um, at that stage. Did you get on that? What's that? Did you get tear on that? No. <laughs> oh, no. I know. It would have been a good thing to do, but no, I wasn't. I'm, I've never, I've never, I'm not really a betting kind of guy, but um, no, I would have loved to. Yeah, <laughs> good. And uh, you're still based down at Eden, so you've kept an eye on the stadium down there. It's looking alright. Yes, the stadium's looking uh, right. sensational. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. Who knows? It's steel and. Concrete in that <laughs> place, but um, I hope so. So you don't work in construction? <laughs> no, on that scale. <laughs> and build a dog kennel, or maybe or a highlight or something. But um, yeah, no. Hopefully, it'll be ready for the World Cup. And um, if not, though, it'll, it'll be there. And I, I, I do believe it's going to make a, a Dunedin and a, a place to be. I think you know it's going to it's, once again it's going to be the place to come to and watch um, rugby in a rectangle environment. Not a lot of um, grounds around New Zealand. You've got the Westpac Stadium in Wellington, and you've got um, Lancaster Park and Carisbrook and Eden Park, and they're all played on, they're all played on ovals. And for, for the for the punter, I didn't realise how how hard Carisbrook was to watch rugby until I was actually sitting on the last few years of it, you know, going and watching the boys. It's such a long way away, and this new stadium, you know, it's so close to the ground. Um, so all of that, all of that. So yeah, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to really create something special, not for just um, the Otago people, but for people around New Zealand to say, let's get on down to Dunedin and experience a buzz, a rugby buzz like we can't experience it anywhere else in New Zealand, and then um, and then invade town on mass. Just like we used to in the nineties. Absolutely. Perfect. But I've got a few questions here from fans. Don't worry, they're not all for you. What's your favourite beer? Favourite beer? I'm oh, Southern man. But if I had to, uh, if I had to say, if I had to have my last pint of beer, if I had to have my last pint of beer, I'd get a pint of Guinness poured for me, preferably in Dublin. Yeah, Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Okay, no, good, cool. But, but yeah, space is good. I like, I like my man, Keno. You've had a few of them, to be fair, over the years, I mean, not tonight. Um, right here, right now, by the field, we've got a in song. Yeah or no? No. Would you rather have Spiny Norm sing it at the Guardians on a Friday night? Spiny Norman. Oh, Spiny Norman. He's a battler, isn't he? What a legend. He's a bloody legend. Have you ever heard of a guy called David Neem? Bloody legend. Yeah. Well, there you go, Neemy. JL remembers you, mate. So uh, have a good day. Thanks for your time, mate. That was awesome. Yeah.